G'day guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Today I'm joined with Kurt and uh, it's a pleasure for you to be here today. Kurt, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, David. Um, Kurt's worked for 20 years in the mental health industry, but we're not here to touch on that to start with immediately. We've calculated um, backward and forward and we've worked out that 15 to 17 years ago, Kurt actually struggled with suicidal thoughts. So I wanted to talk about that today with Kurt so that uh, people out there listening that may be in a feeling stuck or in a rut right now can maybe take something from it and help them, you know, give them that, that, that push that they need right now to get out of feeling that way. So Kurt, again, thank you. When you were feeling suicidal, can you yeah. explain that or can you take us back through the story, please? I'd say um, a lot of it came through probably bullying as a result at school, mm. quite a lot of bullying from an early age. When you are exposed to that sort of bullying, your thought process has changed, you get crippled confidence and your whole perception of life is just an unsafe sort of view. So, you know, from that, that started the suicidal thoughts from, are you worthy enough? Are you good enough? Do you deserve to even have a life? And that pattern of suicidal thoughts just repeats itself until it's rumination. How how long were you experiencing the bullying before the the thoughts started? Well, I think when I cast my mind back, it would have been mm, a, f a few years and even maybe from a young age, maybe even I might have had a few, I touched base with it about 10 years, like 10 years of age. 10 years of age? Yeah. So you were being bullied back then or just, or yeah. just started having, so you were start, just being bullied. So we worked out, I think it was seven, 15 or 17 that you, that you went through the suicidal thought mm. part. So... So a five to seven year period, or yeah. you sort of touched on it when you were 10. Yeah. Okay, so quite a young age. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, at, your brain is still developing, and if you haven't got awareness with mental health, and you've got no sort of people you can confide in with your mental mm. health, then you're pretty much on your own, you're isolated. Mm. With it. So how did you feel at your worst, like, you know, what was the what was the feeling that, was, that, you, were st that you were stuck in, they're my words, but what was the mm. overwhelming feeling? I think the overwhelming feeling came from, as a result of the bullying, I would keep to myself a lot, enjoy my own company, escape into books. And from that, I noticed I would just work a lot, mm -hmm. a lot as a distraction. Books was a distraction, but when it came to trying to enhance the quality of my life, the only way I did it was through not socialising and working as mm -hmm. much as I could, mm -hmm. which made the thoughts even stronger because made me realise things I was missing out on, big experiences, social events, feeling like I was not worthy enough to even be part of the world. Mm. So isolation. You, yeah. You just, and you, and you distracted yourself through reading. Yeah. And then you stopped socialising, so then you, you were awkward with social activities. I was really awkward. I had a lot of anxiety, and I built my own little world as my sanctuary with movies, with books, with music. And that's what got me through, actually. If I wouldn't have had them coping strategies, I think things would have been a bit different. Mm. Yeah. So, what? Oh, so the coping strategies was the reading, the music, the you know, the to, to distract yourself. From from that young age in my teenagers, it was yeah, using my creativity, which I had, and using that strength to sort of just try and enjoy life, have a bit of pleasure, have a bit of escapism. And it was at that time I had not been exposed to a bit more awareness of what other strategies I could do for myself. So what was the turning point? What was the turning point when you went through, okay, I've, you're identified now, mm. the feeling suicidal, you, you're distracting yourself, you're isolated. What was the turning point for you to get your life back on track? Well, I think what happened was the turning point for me was actually when my dad passed away he passed away from an illness and I realized then after looking at my life thinking actually you know life is very short and I hadn't been authentic to myself in how mm. I'd lived it and I wanted to make the most of my life and my dad's legacy by making something better and so I went on to antidepressants for um, a while and it really helped stabilize me through this pit of depression that I've never realized I was in until later on in my life so again I'm not a doctor and mm. I have no thoughts either way with medication but would you recommend 
medication? I would definitely recommend it to get yourself out of that feeling like that feeling of dread, that black cloud that hangs over you. But at the same time, I would also be mindful how long that medication might work for until it becomes a band-aid, until we have to sort of confront some ugly things which are hard. Mm. So you were you you were feeling suicidal. You were mm. uh, distracted yourself by reading and being isolated. Mm. You lost your dad, which was your turning point. But then you lost another family member to suicide. Mm. Do you mind sharing that? So how I look at it is, for me, those two big catalysts in my life: my dad who passed away, then my brother who was young. I think he was twenty one when he took his own life through depression and probably because of the situation with my dad, mm. that made me realise that, you know, I needed to learn from all of these experiences and do what I could to enhance the quality of life from that. Mm. So you've you've come so far and now you're working in the industry with mental mm. health. So that's mm. teaching you again mm. from your experiences that you had, yeah. you can now connect with people on a different level? Yeah, pretty much. When I was younger, I went into mental health. It was sort of, um, you know, happy-go-lucky sort of, let's give this job a try. But mm. I realised as I was doing it, not only am I quite passionate about helping other people who may have experienced these mental health issues themselves, but also it was a way to build on coping strategies for myself and take that time whilst in the job to learn more about myself and build a stronger toolkit, which if anyone has a stronger toolkit to equip themselves with, they're more chance of actually managing depression symptoms and a bit more. So that was, this is my final question for you to, mm -hmm. to finish, because, yeah. you know, thank you for sharing your story, but okay. if there's someone out there that's feeling lost, lonely, hopeless, mm. doesn't, feels like they don't fit in, yep. what advice could you give them if, with your experience? I would definitely take it back to when we look at negative experiences, that's all we see. We only see the negative in everything. And that's how we believe our lives will be sometimes from what I've experienced myself. So I would say if you've had positive experiences, you'll always get that positive experience. And you've got to hold that hope for having those positive experiences again. It's not always going to be as hard as it may be where you are right now. But at the same time, I think it's embracing the fact that life is not this linear, happy place that will just keep on getting better and better. We have peaks, we have ups and downs, and it's just being a bit more aware that it's natural to have these low moments, but it's how you manage and function during those low moments that count the most. Excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Kurt. Thank you for sharing your story with me. Thank you for letting me do it. Um, and... If anyone wants to reach out to you, how could they find you? Well, <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Being in Perth for like 10 years, it's, you know, sometimes hard to build a lot of network and obviously coming from the UK. But I suppose through Instagram would be the best way. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll put that on the, on yeah. the blog that I'm going to post. Yeah. Sounds right. great. So yeah. thanks a lot, Kurt. No worries. And again, guys, it's uh, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Make sure you take the time to smile today.